Welcome back to Viewpoint. In recent weeks, we've been speaking to Gibraltar for Yes and to the Gibraltar pro-life movement. Shortly, we'll speak to Rachel McKenzie about Rachel's Vineyard and a Q&A that she held here on The Rock. First, though, we hear from Professor Louise Kenny, the Executive Pro-Vice-Chancellor of the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences at the University of Liverpool. Professor Kenny is a founding director of the Irish Centre for Fetal and Neonatal Translational Research and an award-winning academic. The campaign group Gibraltar for Yes arranged for her to speak to GBC from Liverpool. Our apologies if a few words are difficult to understand on this Skype recording. So I'm an obstetrician and gynaecologist. Um, I've been practicing obstetrics and gynaecology for the best part of 25 years. And I specialize in, in the management of high-risk pregnancy. I trained in Liverpool. Um, and in, during my time as a junior doctor, I became very familiar with the um, harm that the restricted abortion uh, legislation in Ireland was causing its citizens. Our geographical proximity, our Liverpool's close geographic proximity to Ireland, meant that women leaving Ireland in pursuit of a safe abortion would often come to Liverpool. And I looked after uh, young women and girls uh, at the most appalling times of their lives when they had been denied health care in their own country. And it really crystallized for me at a very early stage in my career that actually um, safe legal abortion is a basic human right. Um, a few years later, uh, in 2006, I actually moved to Ireland. I was recruited uh, to direct a research institute and uh, work as a, a clinician in Ireland. And then it really struck me firsthand how terribly difficult uh, it was to practice uh, as an obstetrician in a country where safe legal abortion was effectively, uh, well, it was illegal, it was not, not available. It meant that women who were critically ill um, were denied abortion. Um, and I know for a fact it resulted in the death of at least a handful of women that I personally knew and took care of, the, the lack of access to abortion. It meant that couples who um, had conceived a pregnancy affected by um, a complex fetal anomaly were forced to carry those pregnancies to term or to leave the country uh, to acquire an abortion overseas, most normally in the UK, at a time when they were at their most vulnerable. And um, so I, took, I started to take part in the national debate in Ireland um, about repealing the Eighth Amendment, the Eighth Amendment within the Irish Constitution, which, uh, which uh, prohibited uh, legal abortion. And I was absolutely delighted when we voted uh, as a country to repeal the Eighth Amendment in May of uh, 2018 um, and subsequently legislated for free, safe legal abortion. So um, that, that's why uh, I... I'm a strong uh, uh, supporter of, of human rights, particularly reproductive human rights. And I'm absolutely delighted to see that Gibraltar has decided to hold a, a similar referendum and hopefully legislate for, for safe legal abortion. Could you explain for us, Professor Kenny, how the lack of legal abortions in Ireland, where you were practicing uh, for many years, um, how that led to you losing some of your patients? Well, during the uh, campaign in Ireland, I spoke frequently about a patient of mine called Michelle Hart. Now, normally patient um, doctor confidentiality forbids us from being able to talk about our, our patients. But Michelle, a former patient of mine, who sadly is now dead, uh, actually um, broke, broke the story to the media herself and spent a long time before she died discussing um, her case in the open, in, in, the, in the public, in the media, in Ireland. Uh, to help encourage the debate um, on, on abortion. And in Michelle's case, she was a, a young mother of one who sadly had advanced uh, cancer. She had an advanced uh, malignant melanoma. Um, and when I first met her, her cancer was actually in remission. She was on a new, uh, a new therapy, an, immuno, uh, an immunotherapy drug, which was holding her cancer in remission. She was on a clinical trial. She unfortunately conceived um, uh, accidentally, and uh, I, I think it's fair to say it was much. It was a much wanted pregnancy, but certainly not planned. Unfortunately, it meant uh, if Michelle had continued with the pregnancy, it would have meant coming off the drug that she was taking to to keep her cancer at bay. 
that drug is a, was a very new drug at the time and it was only available within the uh, confines of the clinical trial that she was participating in. And pregnancy was an absolute contraindication to, to the trial. Um, it was quite well known that without that drug, her cancer would return and her life would be very limited. I thought that um, this was a clear cut case of saving a woman's life and that we should be able to offer her an abortion in Ireland. But unfortunately, our hospital ethics committee disagreed and Michelle had to travel to the UK. She was a single mother without a passport and without much money. And it took her several weeks in order to make the uh, arrangements. And sadly, in that time, she had to come off the trial, stop taking her drug. And she died less than a year later, orphaning her nine year old son. She clearly died because we could not provide a safe, timely, legal abortion in her own country. And that's just one example. There are many more that I, I can't speak of in detail because of patient uh, confidentiality. That argument is fairly easy to follow. Grave risk to the mother's health. Are there other grounds that you would support as valid in your capacity as a medical professional, valid grounds for women accessing an abortion? I am hugely supportive um, of um, a very liberal abortion law. And the reason for that, Jonathan, is very simple. There is always a reason for an abortion. I've never in my entire career met a woman who had an abortion for no reason. And as a doctor and as a woman, it is not my job to judge that reason. My job is to provide health care when a woman needs it most. So absolutely, I think abortion should be available uh, as freely as needed um, in pregnancy. I, I think we can talk about gestational limits. We've had a, a longer debate in Ireland as to what should be the gestational limit for um, unrestricted abortion. And in Ireland, we've settled at the 12 week mark. So prior to 12 weeks gestation, abortion is available um, without having without women or doctors having to specify a reason. Now, not having to specify a reason is not the same as there not being a reason. I can absolutely promise you that there is always a reason for an abortion. Well, under the new law that Gibraltar will vote on next month, uh, mental health is one of the reasons that can be provided in order to access uh, an abortion. Now, the Gibraltar pro-life movement has told GBC that the wording of the law in respect of mental health is too vague and is open to abuse. And they point to uh, statistics. Uh, they claimed the vast majority of abortions in the UK and Wales are accessed on the grounds that the pregnancy poses a serious risk to the mother's health. And of these, the vast majority, again, I think they said 99% uh, are on mental health grounds. What would you say to that? I, I don't like the term pro-life. Uh, I prefer to call um, proponents of uh, restrictive abortion uh, anti-choice. Um, so uh, proponents of the from the anti-choice lobby uh, will often bandy statistics around. And when you unpack um, the data, you find that actually um, they're often either misquoted or completely fallacious. So as you as you rightly say, the majority of abortions carried out in UK are performed under the clause that specifies for abortion for a threat to the physical or mental health. We don't have to specify whether it's physical or mental. So I'm not sure how anyone can then determine that 99% of those abortions are because of mental health. That is at best guesswork or an extrapolation of a very small and probably underpowered study because that data is simply not available. So I would really dispute that, that data. And I, and I think in an argument like this, data and facts do matter. Um, what do I think about uh, women accessing um, abortion on mental health grounds? Um, I think the best person to judge anyone's mental state is themselves. No woman chooses to have an abortion lightly. It is a thing that she will agonize over. She will not do it lightly. She will think about it for, for many, many, many days, often weeks, uh, and she will think about it for a long time afterwards. So I don't think it's for anyone to stand in judgment of her mental health. Do you have any concerns as a medical professional that a woman who wants to access an abortion on mental health grounds would be effectively taking an irreversible decision when she is at a, a low ebb? 
so we do have, and this is where we do have very good data, Jonathan. So um, many studies um, in lots of different countries all around the world have shown that uh, long-term regret following abortion is actually very rare. On the contrary, there is a lot of data that shows that women who have been denied an abortion and have either had to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term or have had to seek an abortion in, an, in, a, in a foreign country or illegally carry the mental scars of that forever. So the overwhelming evidence is that abortion is good for women's mental health rather than bad. And, and that, is, that data is absolutely cast iron. And finally, Professor Kenny, for anyone watching this interview, what would your main takeaway message be? I think for the citizens of Gibraltar um, who, are, who are going to go to the poll on, polls on this issue, I think my message would be very simple. Um, you never have to have an abortion yourself. You don't need to approve of it. You don't specifically need to campaign like I do for human rights. Um, but I think everyone in the polling booth uh, in March needs to ask what would they want for their sister, for their daughter, their wife, um, for their girlfriend? Would they want safe, compassionate care at home or would they want them to travel um, and be treated like a criminal? It, it's a very simple choice. Um, Gibraltar is now has the mantle of being one of the countries with the most restrictive, harshest, cruelest abortion legislation in Europe. And it's time. It's time to it's time to bring this problem home, and for Gibraltar for Gibraltar people to put their arms around their own citizens and say we care. We are a compassionate people, and we will provide for your human rights here at home. Professor Louise Kenny, who has been Professor of Obstetrics and Gynaecology in Cork and is now Executive Pro-Vice-Chancellor of the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences at the University of Liverpool. Again, our apologies if a few words were difficult to understand on that Skype recording.